Hi everyone, this is Susan Hayworth, step parent, counselor and coach. And today's video is about the curative power of connection and community. I'm joined by Brenda Aachen, founder and publisher of Step Mom Magazine. After a successful 20 year career as a marketing executive, Brenda launched Step Mom Magazine in 2009. She's been a guest on many radio and podcast programs over the years, so I'm especially honored that Brenda Aachen is with me today. So welcome, Brenda. Thank you so much for being here. Hi, Susan. It's great to see you. Thanks for having me. It is, this is such a thrill for me because, you know, I'm a big fan of yours. I'm a fan of yours, too. <laughs> I love the magazine. So tell me your backstory. So what prompted you in, almost 15 years ago to launch Stepmom Magazine? Sure. Well, um, like you said, it was about 15 years ago and I had been a stepmom for a few years. And as it turns out, it was much harder than I anticipated it would be. Um, you know, we had all the typical dynamics that step families have with kids going back and forth between two homes and uh, co-parenting challenges and, uh, you know, just my own personal adjustment to having having kids around um, all the time. And it just it was overwhelming, to say the least. So I did what a lot of people do when they have a problem or when they have a question. I Googled it and. 15 years ago, I found almost nothing. There was very little online. And what I did find wasn't very helpful. And what I was really looking for was sort of a, um, a therapist's approach to step parenting, because I, I knew intuitively that, you know, this is human nature. People are doing things because there are certain patterns, there are certain um, circumstances. And so I knew there had to be some answers somewhere, but I didn't know what they were and I couldn't find them online. So being in marketing, I started to do a little research and realized that there's a magazine or a publication for pretty much every topic under the sun, but step parenting and being a stepmom specifically was not one of them. So I thought this is kind of crazy. Um, there, I, I can't be the only woman who finds herself in this situation where she's remarried and has, you know, kids coming in and out of her home and and challenges with their mom and, you know, not knowing what to do. So I just looked into it a little bit more and and thought, well, kind of a, you know, maybe if I build it, they will come type of resource. And uh, the magazine was just an idea that started literally at the kitchen table. And I built a website and called it Stepmom Magazine. And it was amazing because within a few weeks, um, Wednesday Martin, who is the um, the writer of Step Monster, which is, you know, one of the step stepmom Bibles in my book, contacted me and said, you know, I'd love to write some articles for you. And then Mary Kelly called me. Um, she is a licensed therapist who deals with step family issues. Um, and this was 15 years ago. And she said, I'd love to write for the magazine. So these writers just started kind of um, coming out of the woodwork, which was wonderful because I realized very quickly there is a need and there is um, there are people who have studied step parenting and, and step family dynamics, and they do have a lot to say. And so I just used my marketing tools to put it all together into a publication that comes out every month. And um, subscribers just started, uh, I won't say literally appearing, we did some promoting on social media, but from places that I had never even heard of, countries and, and towns and cities, all over the world. And um, it was just proof that step family dynamics are a universal challenge for many people um, and that there are answers and there are solutions. And so that that's how the magazine was born, really. It was out of my own personal need and then really realizing that there was a, a need um, actually worldwide for information of this kind. Wow, so brilliant. I mean, the publication the publishing industry is has been in upheaval. Mm -hmm. And then you came in and you created something that has been a tremendous success. And it was based on a need that you felt personally. 
right? It really was a passion project is what I used to call it. Yeah. 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 So in the process of the magazine is more than just a magazine. That's correct. It is. You've got, you've got um, a chat room. You've got, you've built a community. Mm -hmm. And what have you learned about the stepmom community in that process of building this uh, amazing uh, community of people who need help want and want to also offer help to others. Thank you. Thank you for those kind words. Um, what, what I've learned, Susan, is that the, the number one thing I heard as soon as the forum was made available where stepmoms can go in and chat with each other and the magazine started um, gaining some momentum was I thought I was the, the only one. And now I realize I'm not alone. And I think the power of community, of knowing that, no, I'm not the only one that's struggling with this issue and other people are walking the same path. And there actually are other women who feel like this. And I've been afraid to vocalize this because a lot of stepmoms feel a certain level of shame in admitting that, you know, they're, they're struggling because there are these negative stereotypes. And so once we kind of peel back that curtain and say, you know what, this is actually very normal what you're dealing with. There's a level of relief that comes over the stepmom and then she can begin to look at, okay, what, what is, what is really going on here? And how can I, how can I start to find some help and find some, um, some support, which is really important in, in any aspect of, um, you know, mental health we're learning is, is support is, really key. So the, um, just the notion that you're not alone was really, um, kind of eye-opening to me in the sense that I didn't realize so many people felt alone. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's really phenomenal. And, you know, when I was a, a new stepmom 27 years ago, I searched for something. Unfortunately, you weren't there for me, Brandon. Not um, yet. And so, you know, it was it was a struggle and it was, yes, there was a lot of shame that somehow I wasn't doing this right. Mm -hmm. um, so that that a company said, have you seen the community? Ch have there been any surprises? Have you seen the community change, the composition change or the problems uh, that people are struggling with? You know, I think the problems have not really changed that much. Again, it's there are universal themes. Um, there are very common problems that come with a step family situation, you know, co-parenting, um, in some cases, alienation, uh, you, uh, having, having two households, um, loyalty binds that kids find themselves in. So these are all universal themes that play out again and again and again. And um, you know, I, I think those are, are going to remain constant. I think what has changed is the, the stepmom landscape has, has grown, social media has grown, and with that, the number of tools and uh, resources that are available to stepmoms has definitely grown, which is a great thing because, you know, like you said, when, when, when we were brand new stepmoms, these resources didn't exist. And now it's much easier to find community and much easier to find um, information and advice. The only the only challenge is that with more, um, you do have to do your homework and vetting out, as with anything, what's quality and what's not. Because I, I've always said that bad advice um, can be worse than no advice. So there, there is, there is that you do have to do your homework if you're a stepmom looking for resources. I, I love that you said that, Brenda. So, what would you advise um, stepmoms listening to this video? How, what, what steps can they take to get support? You know, I think going going online, um, there are lots of websites like the magazines that have lists um, of therapists like yourself who specialize in step family dynamics. You know, when you're reading um, when you're reading books or magazines or blogs, make sure that they're solution focused. Make sure that the person writing them has some level of credibility, um, that they understand that they've studied step family dynamics. And, um, you know, just really uh, just do your homework. It's it's if you're in a situation where you find that 
the information is purely venting and not focused on problem solving. Venting feels good for a little while, but after that, it can become toxic and it's it ultimately is not going to help you in your situation. So we try and provide a little balance of, of uh, you know, finding finding that sense of community, the ability to get it off your chest, to commiserate with other people, but then, you know, to pick yourself up and say, okay, now what are we going to do about it? And what's what are some good, solid ideas um, to help carry that through? Yeah, I love that being solution focused is really important. And unfortunately, a lot of chat rooms are not that. Mm. Um, so it's, it's a caution to not get sucked into, as you said, all the toxicity and definitely just venting. So do you think that with all the resources we have, and there are a lot of people, coaches and counselors who are specializing in working step moms and step parents and, and as well, do you think it's gotten easier then for step families? I think, I, I don't think it's easier to be a stepmom. I think it's easier to find ways to navigate stepmom life. Um, and what I mean by that is there, it, because there is so much more information and because there are more and more therapists who are now doing what you're doing, specializing in step family work. Um, there are more coaches available who are specializing in this, this subject matter alone. Um, it is definitely getting easier to find that information. And I think once that happens, then yes, step, step parenting can be, can be easier um, because no, knowledge is power. So taking that knowledge and being able to apply it to your situation, or in some cases, just look, listening to other people's situations can help you understand that, you know, your situation may be not as bad as somebody else's, your situation may be um, similar, and that there are things that you can learn from people who are in, in other situations. It's just the, the information that's available now is, is definitely helpful. Yeah. Yeah. And do you think that the stepmoms have changed over the years? Um, that's a great question. Uh, you know, I think because the the information availability has increased, that they've they've gotten a little bit more confident in their role because they are seeing now that they're um, we've brought what this community of step. Uh, family advocates has done is they brought to light certain truths um, and certain stereotypes. And, and we're starting to slowly kind of bust some of those myths that have existed for so long, like the fact, the, or the, the, um, not the fact, the impression that stepmothers are inherently evil or that stepmothers um, are there to take over or that, um, you know, that co-parenting relationships um, are easy. You know, the media loves to show us pictures of um, celebrities who have this co-parenting thing down and nothing can be more defeating than, than going online and seeing, you know, this picture of whatever celebrity on vacation with their ex, with all the kids. And then you look at your own situation and you think, well, what am I doing wrong? So, this community has really shined a spotlight on some of those issues and said, you know what, you, you aren't unusual. This situation is difficult. Um, you know, there's a double standard that exists with moms and stepmoms in that moms, moms are um, allowed to vent and say, hey, this is difficult. Stepmoms are not allowed to do that quite as easily without um, some, some, repercussions. And if you don't believe me, go on any chat forum and put that out there and you'll see the comments. So I think, you know, those are, those are some of the, uh, those are some of the differences and changes. It's, it's, it's interesting to see how, how it has evolved over the years. Yeah. So I think there are both sides to the, the information overload of, or explosion for step moms in, in particular, but one is, as you said, you know, hearing about people who their curated lives 
that you know, they've got it handled. They're everybody. They love their stepkids. Their stepkids love them. And then if we're not feeling that way, it's you know shame on us. You know, Susan, I that I'm laughing because I'm thinking of a time at a I, we were at a restaurant a few years ago, my husband and I, and I ran into an old college friend, and he had remarried, um, and he had two children from his prior marriage. And as they were talking to us together, he was telling me how great everything is, how the kids love their stepmom and how seamless and smooth. And, and when he turned and I was talking with his, his wife, um, the stepmom now one-on-one, she kind of looked at me and said, well, it's not, it's not all that easy. And it, it was just really, um, reaffirming that people really want other people to believe that, you know, this is easy, that everything is fine. And it's, it's, um, stepmom magazine was created to tell stepmoms it's okay that everything's not fine. It doesn't mean you can't work on it. You can't improve it. You can't grow to have a good, strong relationship with your stepkids. Or if you can't, if, if circumstances don't allow that, that doesn't mean that your partnership can't still be strong, that you can't still have a fully functioning, content home life. You know, there, there are, there are, there are lots of extremes and then there's something in the middle. And so we try to, through the magazine, talk to all of those audiences and and let everybody know that whatever your situation is, it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. One of the things that I hear Brenda, when I tell people I work with step parents, that people often say who are not step parents, they will say, oh, I know so many really successful, happy step parents, Mm -hmm. as if what I'm doing is not that needed, you know, or maybe just for a few people. And I would say, you don't know, you know, because we have a veil of secrecy. We don't Mm -hmm. talk about our struggles in mixed company, meaning, you know, just general public. So, yeah, there are more people struggling than we know. I think that is that is true. In fact, what do you believe in terms of your magazine? I know that you have uh, you have some attrition. Do you believe that the attrition is from people who decide step parenting is is not for them anymore? Um, When that's a great question, Susan, when people leave the magazine, we always ask, why why are you leaving and the um the most common responses are um either life is good and don't need it anymore which is great i love to i love to see those um i also see a fair amount of no longer a stepmom so they have they have um you know unfortunately become one of the statistics that we we read and and know about Um, you know, so that is, uh, that is common. What's also common is people will leave and then come back. You know, it's, it's one of those things that we're here when you need us. Um, step family life can be cyclical and seasonal and sometimes life is good and calm and sometimes things happen and you're, you're thrown right back into, uh, you know, sort of a crisis mode where you need a little extra help and support. So, we see, we see a lot of that where, you know, life is good. Oh, now I'm coming back. And then life is good again. And that's that's just the nature of stepmom life. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It, it works until it doesn't. That's right. And those of us who have been around for a while know that, you know, there are bumps in the road moving forward. As I always say, one of my earliest clients was 20 years into her marriage and in a, into her step family before she hit a major bump in the road. Sure. So it's, you know, I, I think some of our younger stepmoms think life is, once they turn 18, got it made in the shade. Yeah, yeah. that's a really common misconception. Um, and it's not that certain problems don't become easier because as the kids get older, um, you know, certain things do naturally resolve child support and uh, going back and forth between homes on a set schedule and, uh, th- those things are 
you know, go by the wayside. But as kids get older, college, uh, college is around the corner. Um, you know, kids are driving cars, uh, you know, they, they say bigger kids, bigger problems, right? And that doesn't change with step parenting. So the dynamics can shift a little bit. Um, step grandparenting, you know, when, when your stepchildren have kids, that can also be another uh, big transition. Any, any life change or life transition, just, just as with anybody else, is going to create some uh, changes in, in the status quo. And the, the, the important thing to remember is that if you, if you know about some of these things ahead of time, if you've you know, done a little research, if you've read up on SEP family dynamics, if you know what to expect, it can make the ride a lot easier because it, it's not going to take you by surprise. It's you're going to have some of some of those tools in your toolbox, or you're at least going to be aware that hey, this this might be a, a challenging time, and I'm gonna I'm gonna do a little extra self care or a little extra, um, you know, relationship um, attention, whatever it may be. Yeah, I think that's such great advice to be prepared for graduations, for weddings estate planning, you know, all of that is so important. So it doesn't, you know, it, it doesn't go away. Yes, absolutely. So one last question I want to ask you. You have published thousands of articles on step parenting over the almost 15 years. Yes. Lots of advice. So yes. if you could distill it into one or maybe two pieces of advice for stepmoms who are currently struggling, what would your advice be? I think um, that's so hard to do because there's so many, um, there's so many things that I would say and so many lessons I've learned along the way. Um, but I would say that keeping in mind that the nature of life is change is important. You know, my stepkids and I, we have gone through seasons where um, there it was very frosty in the house and, you know, their loyalty binds were very strong and they did not, they were not happy that I was around. And then there have been other times where, um, you know, those kudos have come and we've been very close. And so whatever season you're in know that there there is a capacity to change that that um i think it's very easy when you're especially when you're in a difficult season to feel like it's always going to be that way and that's not always the case um so just keeping that in mind and to reach out to to um you know, to reach out for support and help. I think that's one of the biggest and best things you can do, no matter what kind of problem you're facing, whether it's a stepmom, step family, or just life in general, is that there, there are support uh, networks out there. There are professionals who have made this their, their life's work and their mission to, um, you know, to really understand these dynamics. And so you don't have to suffer in silence. That's, that's, um, you know, that's really key. I think that's what I, what I felt like years ago was that I was, I was all alone and I was kind of suffering in silence and um, we don't have to do that. Stepmoms don't have to do that anymore. Yeah. No. Yeah. What I like to say is suffering in silence is not a treatment plan. No, it is not. It is not. Brenda, thank you so much for taking time out to talk to me today. And this is really personally a, such a, a thrill for me. So oh, thank you, Susan. I love the work that you do. Keep it up. Thank you. You as well. Thanks.